Hello there. I think it's way past the time when I ought to be doing a video on how I'm getting on with my Mavic Air drum. So let's get on and do that. And also I want to show you a new tool that I've got that I use with the drone, which for me has been a complete game changer. So the short answer to how am I getting on with my Mavic Air is very well. Having said that, I've not flown it anywhere near as much as I thought I would do. And I wish I had flown it a bit more. Finding one of the biggest problems is finding somewhere suitable that has a good takeoff and landing place. And I can fly at a reasonable distance and still keep the drone in my eyesight. Now obviously with the amount of jungle and forests around here that creates a bit of a problem sometimes. And also we have the local laws that you are not allowed to fly drones in national parks which actually are one of the ideal places that have open areas that you could use for takeoff and landing. But if that's the law that's the law and there's no point crying about it really. I've had one or two minor issues, nothing too drastic. I think the main one was a few months ago when it was actually blisteringly hot and I think it was actually too hot for the drone. And once it had been up in the air two or three minutes, I think it was crying, I've had enough, I can't cope with this. And I was getting all sorts of weird readouts on, the, uh, on my mobile phone. So I thought the best thing to do was just to bring it back down to ground and in this particular case that I'm thinking of I actually went back at 8 o'clock the next morning when it wasn't so hot and managed to take the drone footage that I wanted to do. So up till now considering the capital outlay my cost per minute of flying the drone is probably ridiculously high but hopefully we can remedy that in the coming months. Having a drone certainly added a new perspective to my ability to make videos. I resisted buying one for an awful long time but in the end I relented and uh, actually I'm pretty glad I did even though I haven't got as much value out of it so far that I wish I had done. My buying experience was very good. I decided not to order one online though even though it would have been cheaper. I actually went to a local DJI store in Chiang Mai and they sorted everything out for me, all the registration paperwork and the insurance and okay it cost me a few thousand baht more than if I'd have done it all myself and ordered it from Ali or Lazada or something but I think it was worth paying the extra to have it all done in-house and it was all explained to me what I could do what I couldn't do I've seen all sorts of tales on Thailand forums about people buying drones and not being able to fly them after having them for a year because they were still waiting for them to be registered by the CIA in Thailand. I mean, spoke to the lady in the shop, she said, that's not really an issue as long as you don't do anything stupid. Um, just don't fly it in heavily populated areas, um, restricted places like national parks and near airports. I said, apart from that, you should have no problem. And I think my registration took about three weeks, that was it and insurance was effective from the moment I walked out of the shop with it. Anyway the main purpose of this video was actually to show you a new app which I am now using to fly the drone with. Um, the DJI Go app which is the official app to use with the drone is excellent though there's some things that you'd like to do which you can't do and the main one is being able to pre-plan a flight which I'm I'm not totally sure so don't quote me on this I think on things like um, 
the Pro 2 and the, and, and the Zoom. Um, you can actually do something about that, but with the Mavic Air, I'm led to believe that the only way you can do it is actually to fly the round the route first and use that data to make the waypoints for flying it the next time. So I actually found an app that's called Litchi. And the great benefit to me with this is not only can you pre-plan your flights, but you can actually do it on your laptop. Um, which, when you get to a certain age and your eyesight isn't as good as it used to be and you're all thumbs, I find doing stuff like this on a phone screen to be very fiddly and not at all easy. But when you have to do it on a laptop, set it all up and then you just transfer the file to your phone within the Litchi app is an absolute godsend. So here's a brief explanation of what the app's all about with a few pictures and a few screenshots. Uh, I'm not going to give a full in-depth instruction on how to use the, the uh, app. There are plenty, well I say plenty, there's a few up there on YouTube and they've probably done a far better job than I could do. But I'll give you my first impressions of what I think about it and, um, and how I plan to use it. Here we have a screenshot from my laptop after I'd put the data in to fly a mission around the local area around my house. The numbers in the purple teardrops, numbers one to six, refer to the waypoints that I've set. So the drone will start from waypoint one, go to two, to three, etc., etc., until it gets to six. At each of those six waypoints, you will see that there's a little graphic that looks a bit like a paper aeroplane. And the sharp pointy end is actually the direction I've told it to point the camera. In addition to the six waypoints, you will see there's also four light blue graphics with a little picture of a camera in the middle. And these are to designate points of interest. So you can set it up that when you're at a particular waypoint that the camera will point at the point of interest that you have instructed it to. So for instance here at waypoint 4 I've told it to point the camera at point of interest 3 which is the golden Buddha on the temple. At the top centre of the screen you'll see it says local 1 which is the name I gave this particular mission and the total flying distance for this mission is 987 meters which will take six minutes you actually set the speed yourself and go as quick or as slow as you like obviously within the limitations of the drone once the drones reached waypoint six in this case um, you then give it the option to either return to home in which case it will come back and land at the point it took off from go back to waypoint one or I believe you can actually tell it to land at waypoint six which probably wouldn't be a good idea if that was over a lake so this screen is the same as before except we're now showing details for waypoint number four as you can see the little icon has changed from purple to green and here it shows us the longitude and latitude of waypoint four uh, what altitude we've set for us to be there at and the speed that we will be traveling which basically here it says cruising which is something we've set previously in the settings tab and you can see where it says PO, POI um, that's the point of interest and we've told it to point the camera at point of interest number three focus on the point of interest and stay in that spot for three seconds now this is a screenshot from the phone app and you see on the left hand side there's five little squares and the fourth one down looks like a play button so you press that and the mission you have programmed into the app it will run exactly as you've told it to 
So all you need to do is to stand there and watch the drone fly the way you've told it to.
hope you enjoyed this video and found it informative. If you did, I would appreciate it if you give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more videos about this beautiful country of Thailand and various equipment reviews that I do from time to time, please consider subscribing with notifications turned on and then you will be informed every time there's a new video posted. Thank you very much for watching and hope to see you again.